In today's tutorial, let's do a lady slipper together made up of three motifs. It's a free pattern for ladies as well as children. Let's go through this pattern right after this. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. Today we have a lady slipper here in tutorial format. The pattern is available for child size. You just have to alter the instructions in order to make it to a child size. I think that the lady size will be more in demand and so I'm gonna film the lady size today. In the pattern it's uh, made up of three different motifs. We have motif A which is the front section right here and then B is both sides of the heel. They're identical to each other. The only difference is on how it's turned in order for it to sit flat. If you look at the instructions you're going to notice that you have your motif. So you have motif A and then there's two B's. So that's the identical side on both on both sides of the heel. So what's gonna happen here is on motif B we're gonna slightly change the, the storyline on the on the side here to make it flat just so that you can see it going flat across the sole of the shoe. And uh, basically we'll need some stitch markers for that and uh, you can have a lot of fun with these colors and ideas. So we're going to be able to do this. So I have to tell you all of this slipper is made up of three motifs. So if you're doing a set you're gonna need six motifs. Now what is identical to each one of these is round number one, two and three. Okay? So one, two and three. Okay? One, two and three. So you can do all six motifs all the way to round number three and then come back and finish round number four because round number four is different from the front so on the front one here and round number four for the two B sections are different. So you can do all six motifs and get it to where you need it to go and then change it on the final round. So when you're going to do this I would recommend that you do all of the one section. So do all round one first on all six and then come back and do all round two do all six and do three and all six and then just join us back with a round number four and for the different variations of A and B. That's what I'd recommend. So without further ado let's grab our Bernat Super Value a size H uh, uh, five millimeter crochet hook today and let's begin working on this pattern. Again I'm doing the adult size the ladies version today. So let's begin a size H five millimeter crochet hook. Let's start off with a slip knot and we're gonna start off in the center and we're going to do all six motifs at the same time and we're just gonna just keep jumping from one to another in order to remember the pattern a lot closer. So we're going to start off by chaining of five. So one, two, three, four and five and insert your hook into the beginning chain and yarn over and pull through to create a center ring. This is the very center of your hexagon. Let's move up to round number one. Now round number one is the beautiful majestic medallion right in the front uh, or right in the middle of your hexagon. We're gonna start off by chaining four. One, two, three, four. This is going to count as one treble and we have to treble 17 more times into the center ring. To treble we wrap the hook twice and insert into the ring, pull through, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. Okay, so we wrap twice into the center. So if the first one counted as one treble, the chain of four counts as one treble and we do 17 more trebles, you're gonna have a total of 18 of these posts going all the way around. So I want you to watch for that. So make sure you have your 18. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave that to you and I'll be right back. I'll have this done and then I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so I have my 18 posts going all the way around. Just pull, pull it out if you don't see it. So one, two, three and, and I have all the way to 18. When you get this done just join to the top of the beginning chain four and you are done this color. So I want you to fasten off on this color. So what I want you to do is that there's six motifs all together. I want you to do this same motif section right now and do it another five more times. Okay, so I want you to have a total of five of these medallions and uh, or five of these hexagon starts. Okay? And then when we come back I'm going to start you up on row number two and then you're going to do all of them again in row number two and then catch back up. So this allows you to be able to follow the pattern and have it kind of done as an assembly line. So get uh, all your five done or so that you have a total of six and then meet me back here and then we'll carry on with round number two. 
Okay, so keeping in the spirit with monkey see, monkey do. So what I've done is that I'm doing my whole slipper and I have my three center motifs for my one slipper. Okay, so you'll need a total of six of these. Let's move on to round number two. Let's grab our next color. Mine's gonna be purple and I'll show you how to do round number two and then I want you to do all of the, the motifs again for round number two because it's identical for each one of them. Okay, we're gonna start the very first one and we're going to Grab our next yarn, create a slip knot. It'll be nice and sturdy. And what I want you to do is that we want to go into any um, of the of the trebles. Okay, so this is the adult version. The bit, uh, the children's one. This would be double crochets. So just go into any one. It doesn't matter which one. And we're going to start. And the very start, um, they're kind of like puff stitches. I think what what are they calling these things? Um, they're clusters. So what we're going to be doing is that we're going to create clusters. So let's just join it and then chain two. So the beginning cluster always starts off differently and then the rest are all identical. So what we want to do is that we want to yarn over and go into the same stitch twice. So going into the same stitch, yarn over, pull through and hold and then yarn over and go into that exact same stitch again, pull through and hold. You have a total of five loops on your hook just like you see right here. I want you to yarn over and pull through the first four only. Okay and then yarn over and pull through the final two. And that's the beginning um, cluster and the rest are all identical to each other. So watch. We're gonna chain one first and go into the very next um, treble. Okay, here on the child's version it will be double crochet. So yarn over going into the next stitch. See how I'm trapping this one in position as well and pulling over and pulling through. Yarn over going into the same stitch pulling through and yarn over going into the same stitch. So you wanna do that a total of three times. Okay, so now you have a total of, of six loops here plus the final. So you wanna yarn over, pull through all six loops this time and yarn over, pull through the final two and chain one. I'll show that again. So we're gonna yarn over going into the next um, treble, pulling through, yarn over, same one, pull through, yarn over, same one, pull through, now you'll have a total of seven loops on here but you only wanna yarn over and pull through the first six. And the easy way to remember that is just don't go through the final one and yarn over, pull through the final two and chain one. Okay, so I want you to do that all the way around and I want you to do that for all of your motifs and when I come back I'll show you how to finish off. So let me review again. So I've already chained one so I'm going in and in and in, okay. So I wanna yarn over, so I did that three times. Yarn over, pull through all the first six and don't drop your stitches like that. Pull it through all six, yarn over, pull through the final two, chain one and then start again. Please do that all the way around. So now coming up all the way back around and I got my last cluster. I wanna chain one first and then just join it to the beginning, top of the beginning chain our cluster that we started with. You should have a total of 18 of these going all the way around. Don't get confused by this uh, one right in the front. It always looks a little bit unusual um, but you want to do this now with all of the, the motifs that you have. So do all six now uh, just exactly this. This is uh, round number two and you're just gonna do exactly the same thing and then meet me back here after you get those done and we'll carry on with round number three together. So just I'm weaving in the ends getting them out of the way so then I can start off nice and clean with each one of those as I go. So we're gonna, for this one, so we're gonna go from here to here for all six and do that next and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So I'm back and now I've finished up row number two going all the way around and so if you're doing a, a pair of slippers, chances are you have two feet so you'll do um, a total of six of these. So now I'm going to move up to round number three. We're gonna do again the same thing for all of the six and then round number four we're gonna change it. So let's uh, join and I'm gonna do some beige kind of coloring yarn to go with this. So let's uh, move up to round number three next. In round number three we're going to be creating what appears. So right now it, it looks like a complete circle because it is. You see it there. So we're now going to complete the hexagonal shape that you see. So you're gonna see five double crochets here okay in the one corner and then we're going to do some, uh, two double crochets into each one of these spaces and then so basically you, you skip you do two and then the next one is another corner. So if you can see the repeat pattern so it's a corner and then two and then a corner and we can do that all the way around. So you'll see that here on the on the top as well. It's kind of easier to see. So there you go, corner, the two and then corner, the two 
corner. So let's do that next. So let's begin with a slip knot. Okay, using your same size crochet hook. We're gonna go into any one of the chain one spaces. So right in between any of the clusters is good. Doesn't matter which one. So we're gonna start off with and we're going to join it. So join the yarn. And it says to chain three. And that counts as a double crochet. And we're going to double crochet again into that same space. Okay, so we're not starting off in a corner if you've picked that up already. So the next one we have is according to the instructions is um, the five double crochets in the next chain one space. So in the next chain one space right here there's going to be five. So this is our first corner. So one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so now you satisfied that. The next chain one space there's gonna be two double crochets into it. You notice that I'm not doing any chain ones after I get stuff done on this one. It's gonna be completely solid. So okay, once I get that done I skip over to the next chain one space and do another two double crochets. Once I get that done here's the next corner. So the corner has how many? If you said five give yourself a cookie. So there's five double crochets that make up a corner. So when we're thinking about the corner is that if there's five the middle one is the center of the corner. Does that make sense? Okay, so once you get that done the next chain one space is two double crochets. And I want you to do this same configuration going all the way around. The next one is two double crochets. So we have the two in there and then the next one is another corner. Okay, and then the corner it's five double crochets. Complete this all the way around. I'll meet you back here in just a moment and then we're gonna have to get all the other motifs that you have all caught up to this point as well. Okay, so you can see that the hexagonal shape is starting to take effect. So just a few seconds ago I just left you and now I'm coming up to the near to the end. You notice how we started off with two and then it was a corner. So we have to make sure that this one is a, a two and then this one's a corner and that happens to work out anyway if you're count, keeping the right count. So I'm just coming up all the way back around. So this one's a five in this one. And then the final one is the space is two double crochets. And we're just going to join this to the top of the beginning chain three. So if you've done this right you should be able to count six sides. So I got um, so I got six corners. So I got one, two, three, four, five and six. Okay, so you gotta make sure you have that or you're in trouble. So and not by me. I'm not gonna be handing out any discipline today. So just continue to do that. So do all of your six once again. Get it up to this level and then meet me back here and then we're going to start round number four of motif A and then we'll do round number four of motif B. And that, that's how it's gonna go from this point. Dun dun dun. Okay, so here we go. So I have my three now for the one slipper. You'll need six of these. And we're now gonna be going up to uh, round number four which is different from motif A and B. So on each slipper motif A is one of each. Okay, so there's gonna be one on the top of the, f uh, the foot area. So you'll need to do two motif A's and then four uh, motif B's in order to make this pattern. So let's move on to round number four motif A and we're only gonna make two motif A's. So let's uh, begin to do that next. Let's move on to round number four. So we're gonna take the same color yarn and we're going to go to round number four motif A. You'll need to make two motif A's. So what, where we finished if you kind of notice that we're here we finished in between and so we want to make sure that we're keeping in balance with each other. Okay, so we're going to join the yarn again right where we finished. So because we did all six at one time you will have this yarn cut off and need to restart. So let's just join as if we're not <laughs> changing any yarn. So what we need to do then is that we're going to um, chain one and single crochet into the same stitch. Just like that. And let's read the instructions together. So it says one single crochet in the same space which we just did and one single crochet in each of the next three double crochets. But can I give you a, a tip here? We're gonna do motif A. So right where we have the corner so we have the, the five. The middle one here is going to still continue to be the corner. Every time we get to the middle one right where we're about to do we want to put in three 
single crochets into there. Okay. And we want to, so that it allows you to turn the corner. So it's just a really quite an easy pattern to follow. So let's go into the next one. So one single crochet. So if we follow exactly what it says, you'll end up on the corner. So you're just doing three single crochets in a row. And look, we're here on the middle one of the five. So the middle one of the five is going to have three single crochets. Just like that. So now what you're just gonna do is that you're going to single crochet all the way across until you get to the middle one of the next five again and then you will do three there as well. See how easy that is? This is motif A. So we got one. So you can either count it. I think it says eight. Yeah, it says eight. Um, but I'm not gonna bother because I know that my counts are right anyway. But you can count it if you uh, feel inclined to do so. But I'm just going to look for that middle of the five. On motif B you are going to want to count so maybe you give yourself a little bit of a rest. So here we go. The middle one of the five is going to be three single crochets again. I want you to continue to do this all the way around and then fasten off and I want you to do motif two motif A's complete for your set of uh, slippers and then we're gonna move on to motif B. When you get all the way back around a motif A remember that we did one and we joined it once and then we did three um, single crochets in a row. So that gives you four and we know according to the pattern that there's eight single crochets in between the corners. So when we finish the last corner here and finish up just keep in mind that you only have four single crochets left. Two, three. Your counts are so important uh, when, th when this stuff. So um, once you get your four in just join it to the top of the beginning single crochet and then that finishes that one off just like so. Please do another motif A. So do one more and keep it aside and just make sure that you don't get confused on what is motif A and B. It might become very obvious um, but uh, just keep it separate so that you know which one is which. So do another motif A and then come in back and join me and we'll do motif B together. Let's begin motif B. So you'll need total of four of these motifs for a complete pair. Okay, so what we're gonna start off with is that you can start off in any one of these sections if you wish because we have fastened off. Here's my recommendation. So what I want you to do is I want you to locate a center one of the five. Okay, and now don't include that one and just count back um, five. So one, two, three, four and five and go to the next one which is number six. Okay, and put your hook in. It makes sense in just a moment. So I want you to uh, to create a slip knot and fasten your yarn onto that sixth one away. So now that you have that and it's really close to this first um, corner right here. So I want you to chain one and it says to single crochet into the same space. And then it says according to this is that you're going to do one single crochet in each of the next five. So here's your five. So one, two, three, four and five. And guess what? The next stitch is the center one that you that you needed in order to do the three single crochets into the next one. Okay, so you're maintaining that. So that's the easiest way to do it. So one, two and three. Now according to the instructions is that we have to then do exactly what we did with motif A and we have to do this um, for almost most of it but then we have to change. So let's uh, continue to do this pattern once again. So we're going to do one single crochet in each of the next eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. And guess what? It takes you to the middle one of the next five. That's if your counts are right, right? So you're gonna put in three single crochets again into that one. And the instruction said to do that twice so we're gonna do that again. So the next eight will be single crochets. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. And then the next one is the next corner. So there's three uh, single crochets. This is where I want you to just uh, kind of stop at this moment and let's quickly reflect on what we're doing. So we now have our three in. We gotta repeat this pattern one more time so that the next eight will be on its own. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. 
and that'll take you then to the middle one again. So they'll put three single crochets in there. And this is where we need to stop at this point because we need to place some stitch markers. So how you're looking at the boots, okay, so if you were wearing it, you would see the, the line coming up from the back of your heel. You, this is the top of the heel area and then this is the front leading to the foot area. So what I want you to do is on the middle one of the, of the three last single crochets you put into, I want you to put in a stitch marker. And this marks exactly where we need to uh, start assembling things. So this is just spare yarn. If you wanna use an official marker, that's up to you. So carrying on for this pattern, it says that we have to single crochet for the next 14 stitches. So we have to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. Okay, so we just went that way all together and now the very next one we are going to have two, uh, sorry, three single crochets. So one, two, and three. And then in the middle one we want to put another stitch marker in there and that helps us to know which is which. Okay, so this is the base area and all you just need to do at this point um, is just the remainder stitches you're just gonna put in a single crochet. So one, two, three, and four and just finish it like so and then just join it to the top of the, the beginning just like that. Okay, so now by the stitch markers we can see that it's kind of flattened off at the bottom that we still have the, the back of the heel, we have the top and then the forward. So I need you to do four of these motifs all together. So this is number one. Can come back and join me and uh, get those done and then we'll start uh, putting some stuff together and then making some sense of this pattern as well. Okay, so we're now ready to go on to the next part and you will have two motif B's for each of your slippers. So you'll have four of them completely if you're doing a pair and then you're going to have one motif A for the other pair of slippers, okay? So we have marked with our stitch markers where we're going to be doing it and we're going to be using these as a idea of where to join and what we just need to do is then refer back to the pattern and show you where to join and that's coming up right next. So back to the pattern we go, if we look at this diagram here it says the seam is the dash. So we can see motif A is going to, is going to be joining here. Okay, so if we look at it here motif A when we look at the slipper. Okay, so we look straight down. Okay, one side is coming to one side of the hexagon and the other one is coming to the other side just like that. So what I would probably recommend we do. Okay, so the, here's motif A. Okay, and we're going to be able to do it. So I'm going to join like this. Okay, and we're gonna do back joining only and I'll show you how to do that and then the other one is going to join to the other side of that. And what we need to pay attention to is where these stitch markers are. So I gotta make sure that it joins um, where we exactly can see it on this pattern. So we gotta make sure it stays to the outside for when we're doing the stitch markers. Let me uh, show you how to join and then we'll get more detailed into that. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to join. So this is uh, motif A and this is motif B. Okay, using these stitch markers stay toward the outside of the join just like this. Okay, so taking both just turn it upside down so you can see it. I'm just gonna turn it in a way that makes it easiest for me. So I'm going to just create a slip knot on one side and I'm going to put a darning needle in or a yarn into my darning needle. And what I want to do is that I wanna go in the back of the stitch first. Okay, so there's always two stitches um, when it comes to uh, doing crochet. What I want you to do is come into the first loop that's closest to you and so I want to come out and I wanna start off in the very first one that is the middle one of the three that is in the corner. So just go into the one loop only and then grabbing the matching one on the other side. Coming across. Okay, so pull through and just put your needle through the slip knot and that'll lock that into position. And then when I go to continue to do this, I wanna keep that straggler down on top. I wanna work towards me and just continue to go in the one loop on one side of the motif 
one loop on the other. Okay, and making sure you go up over top of that straggler so you can keep that in check. Continue to work all the way down. When you get to this point here, you're going to want to fasten off. And then you wanna repeat it for the other side. Okay, so you gotta just remember which one is motif A and B. And the easiest way to do that is that B has been marked with these stitch markers as well. So continue that and I'll show you how to just uh, quickly uh, end this once you get to the end. So I'm coming close to the bottom of the seam line. There's only one line across. And I wanna match it right to the stitch marker and that'll be on the other side. It's the middle one of the three. Okay, so making sure I go into the back loop only. There we go, got it. I'm trying not to grab my stitch marker in there because it's harder to get out if you trap it into the fibers. So once I'm in, what I'm gonna do is that I'm just gonna make a quick little knot and then I'm gonna show you how to weave in my end. So to do that, I'm just gonna put it through the loop and a yarn can never stretch in three di different directions at the same time. So you're gonna go across, just gliding it into some fibers in one direction. You're going to go a second time in the opposite direction. Again, in a different group of fibers. That's two. And then go a third time. Okay, and you wanna keep going in different fibers when you do that or it'll fall out. Okay, so now you've uh, completely fastened that in and then you can trim the other one because you've been hiding that one too. So basically you can turn this back over. Okay, so this is the top of my foot for motif A and then this here will then be motif B and we're going to attach the other one, okay, to the other side here and do the exact same thing, just working our way down the line and then right down to the stitch marker just like so. Pl so please do that one on your own and I'll be back and I'll show you how to continue. Okay, so now I have my two sections then done together and remember this is gonna fold in a way that it's going to look like uh, a slipper but it's not quite ready yet. So we, what we want to do is that we want to attach the back um, area part together. Okay, so if you look at the diagram once again is that we're going to be attaching, see the other seam line right here and here? Those are gonna attach together. So really what you need is that you're gonna have two empty spots where your foot is gonna slide into the slipper right here but the back seam here should be um, closed. So make sure you turn it inside out before you do that. Okay, so you're looking at the wrong side once again and just sew up the back line right there. Okay. So we wanna keep it so it's easy to remember and uh, just make sure that you are getting the right seam when you go to do that. So it's right there, right there. Okay, so this will be the whole open area for the sole and then we'll be covering that next. So I want you to sew those sections together and just follow the stitch work up using the stitch markers and all the way to the top section right here. Okay, once you get that back seam done just like so, you're gonna turn it inside out again sorry inside right or it was inside out. So here's what it looks like so far. So so far your leg and foot will go down into here but we have no sole to work with at this time. Okay so now we're gonna do the sole. So the stitch markers that you did have in there you can take those out. We're no longer gonna be watching for those but we need to put in a stitch marker uh, in the center. So what I've done here on the crochetcrowd.com, I'm going to put a copy of my working notes here and this is the heel area here and I'm showing you how stitches can come together and we're gonna be covering this. There's seven uh, rotations around and then this here is the toe area. You're going to notice in the toe area that it wraps more around. It sweeps with more single crochets together than it does in the heel. Okay, so what I have done here is if for any chance or any reason you are messed up on the sizing in any way as long as you always know what the center point is. So the center point will always have a single crochet coming down the middle and you can see the two together are, are on both sides of that center line. Same with the back here. This is easy to count. So you can count back to 11 stitches and that's where you're gonna start this one. Uh, round number two is just, um, sorry round number three is all just single crochet around. Round number four we start doing that again and that's 11 stitches from the center. Okay and it's the same on the other side as well. And you can keep going around and around and making it very easy to remember. Okay, so what I want you to do to make this a lot easier for you, I want you at the center point 
Okay, so right where there's three single crochets right in the center point, I want you to place a stitch marker and that will be the center point for what you can work on that diagram with. Okay, and it's just it's, it's a lot easier if you know that. So just put in a stitch marker that you know is not gonna fall out too much and uh, we're gonna be working around all the way around in this bottom area just like so. So when I have the other one, you can kinda see it lifts up here as the two join. Okay, and then you can see it comes together. So we're gonna just work on the outside and get ourselves more narrow and then just join it with the middle just like that. So let's begin round number one of the sole. So do you notice how you got these lines that come straight down? They look like they're, they're like shoe marks. It's kind of a neat effect. This is because we're working on the back loops only for the entire first revolution. So when we go to start that we have to be very conscientious of that so that we can keep one of the lines up. So if you see it here, Okay, there's two strands. We wanna play within the, the, this one here and not the first one so we get that beautiful line that is coming up all the way around. So let's begin and I'm going to use a darker sole. Just makes sense in my house. I got cats. So what we have here is that I want to go to the back middle strand just right here. Okay, just go right into the middle one and that one I wanna get on the back loop only. Okay, so once we get that first one we're always gonna mark it as, as our um, um, back. So we're gonna chain up one first and for the first entire revolution we're gonna single crochet in the back loop only. We're just gonna go into the back loop of each one of the single crochets all the way around. Okay. When you get to that stitch marker and I'll, when I get there I'm going to move the stitch marker up one so I never lose my center point of my, my foot. Okay, so you're gonna be riding up and down throughout the, the hexagon shapes. Just stick with it, it will balance itself out and you're getting this beautiful line that we talked about. Let me uh, just fast forward and get you to the center point of the, sh of the foot. We're coming up uh, not to the center foot yet but we just wanna make sure that we're just capturing every stitch. Okay, so just making sure you're getting everything along the way. You don't wanna be adding ec any extra and if you are adding extra just be consistent that you're adding extra. So you see how I jumped in between there. I'm just looking for the back loops and it gives me a great indication of doing so. So I'm coming up close to the, the toe or the front of the shoe or slipper. I have a tendency when I do uh, slippers that I never do the same size twice. <laughs> Especially for babies. Oh, you know you're off by one stitch and it makes a huge difference. So what I wanna do is I wanna make sure I'm trying to be as successful as possible and not um, adding any extra than I need to. So I'm coming up close to the stitch marker here. Okay, which is the next one here. So I'm just gonna move it out of the way. Just get the back loop of that one. And before I continue I want to take the tail of that and pull it through and then that represents the new center point as I go up. So I'm gonna continue to single crochet all the way around on the back loop and I'll meet you back there in just a minute and this is row number one of the heel. Okay I'm coming up all the way to the back of the heel and I'm just going to slip stitch to the beginning single crochet and that completes off round number one. Let's get ourselves set up. I'm going to create some more stitch markers for myself and I wanna show you what I can do with those in order to make it a lot easier. So we have to keep getting smaller and smaller toward the inside and so we have to refer to my diagram that I've done for you or just follow the written instructions to be able to get that but I'll show you a, a trick for that. So I'm coming to my diagram here and for round number two I notice that I have to go 11 stitches before I get to the center point. So I don't include that center point when I'm going to count 11 and it does a single together um, crochet for sing or single crochet together. It does that four times in a row then it hits the center point and then another four times on the other side. So what I wanna do is that I wanna now count back from the center point of my, of my thing. So I'm gonna come around and here's the center point. Okay, so I'm going to count back to 11. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and 11 and in the 11th one I wanna put another single uh, stitch marker there so I know exactly where it is when I get there. Uh, so I don't have to worry about counting and then I can follow that along. Now when I get back to the other side 
Okay, on the other side I determine that it's eight stitches before I finish. Okay, so I'm gonna count back to the eight. Just so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And I wanna count there. Okay, so it's easy to start it off um, the repeat pattern once you get it uh, done. But it's just a matter of just marking your stitches there so you can see it a lot better. So let's carry on with round number two. So let's begin round number two. So I've already got the first mar part marked. Okay, where we're gonna start doing the together decrease uh, over here. And once I start here I know what I need to do to go all the way around and then I have the other one started over here for when we go to finish off. So let's begin round number two. And round number two is we, we chain up one first and it's one single crochet into the first one. Okay, so the next one is one single crochet. Um, it's sorry, one single crochet two together. So it's gonna be two together so we just wrap going into the next one. So you have three loops on your hook and then we come around and pull through both just like that. Okay, and we're gonna do that a total of three times in a row. So the next one is gonna be one single crochet. So the next one is two together again. And that's for number two. And then the next one single crochet. And then the final one is two together again. So that's your third time. So now we're going to just single crochet until we get to the first stitch marker that we've already previously marked. Okay. So what that is doing is starting to pull it underneath the heel. And that's the whole concept. So this is gonna get faster and faster as we decrease stitches as we're working on this process. So you don't hear me counting because I've already marked my stitches and where I want to go. Okay, so there's their first stitch marker coming up and that's the first one that's going to be two together. Okay, so the next two are two together and I wanna leave that stitch marker in because I might need it later. Okay, so going so two together for the next one and then a single crochet. We've gotta do that for a total of four times before we get here to the center point of the, of the foot. So we're gonna do it again. The next one is a single crochet. The next two are together again. And then a single crochet. And then this is the, the fourth time. And look at that, the one right in the middle is one single crochet by itself. I want you to move that stitch marker up into this section so we know where to find it for the next rows. Okay, and so now we're gonna continue that same patterning. So the next two are gonna be together. We're gonna do it four times on this side as well. So two together and then one single crochet for one, two together, and one single crochet for two, two together, one single crochet for three, and then two together, and that's it. So now you have completed the first part of this heel section, or sorry, of the front toe. And so now you can just safely mosey on back and the next stitch marker you're going to run into is the back of the heel where we're going to put um, some two together stitches in once again. So let's just single crochet across. I think the stitch markers would save everybody a lot of time if they just take the time to lay it out for themselves. But again, that's a completely your decision that you do. You are the you are the crochet. You can do what you want. That's the easiest way for me to do it and learn at the same time. Plus, I'm also on camera, and for me to give tips and count at the same time is kind of hard. So for the heel area, it goes two together for a total of three times. So it's two together, single crochet, two together, single crochet. So the first one will be at the stitch marker of two together. Okay, so here we are. So the next one is two together and then single crochet. The next one is two together, single crochet, and then the final one is two together. Okay, and the single crochet then would be the one that's right in the center point. So you're just going to just join it anyway with the beginning. Okay, so that concludes off uh, round number two and let's go for round number three next. 
Round number three is really easy. No brainer. It's just chain one, one single crochet in the first one. Every stitch around is going to be one single crochet each. So we're giving the material time to flex and come up underneath the, the foot. And so it's just one single crochet into each. And I'll see you back here in just a moment and then we'll relay out our stitch markers and then begin round number four. Before I get to round number four, I'm just on round three doing one single crochet. Don't forget that when you get to the front of the foot, move that stitch marker up to match the new center point stitch that you're working with. Okay. And if you look at it, kind of follow it straight up. Okay. And just move it up. And put it underneath. like so and then keep on going. So just uh, one single crochet in each going all the way around. You don't need to do that for the back one that you had over here. Okay, the back uh, stitch marker just the first one it's just to keep ourselves balanced in the front of the foot. So coming up all the way back around I've joined with the slip stitch and now here is what we have. You can see that the gapping is getting smaller and smaller for the bottom of the sole. So let's uh, begin and look at the diagram once again and we're now going to move up to round number four. So round number four we're going to start off and we're going to do the, the two together and it'll be three times again and then we'll carry on. So we're right where I've marked it it's another 11 stitches back. Okay so let's do that first. So I have to, it's going to change locations from where it was before. This is what I, I kind of wanted to show you. So I'm going to count back. To, so don't count that middle one. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So right there is where the next stitch marker is going to go. So I pulled out that other one and I'm moving it. And when I look back at the other one, where are we for the heel? It's eight stitches back um, for where we have. Okay, so there's eight. So when I do number four, it's eight stitches, just like so. So actually, let me just verify that. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's nine stitches, sorry. The heel is nine stitches away. So let's carry that back. So here's where I slip stitched. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So this is where I'm gonna put it on the back of the heel. So when I get there, I'll know what to do. I know this is kind of cumbersome, but you can see I don't really have to count much when I do that. So let me put my uh, hook back in and let's start off row number four. Let's begin row number four and round of four. We're gonna chain up one, one single crochet in the first one. So here we go. And what we're going to do is that the next one is gonna be two together and we need to do it total of three times. So we got one and then single crochet. Two together again and single crochet for two and single crochet and that was for three. Okay, so now we're just going to single crochet along until we hit the stitch marker once again for the front side of the foot. It's gonna be quicker coming up on you because we have less stitches to work with. And once we get there for row number four, there's, it's going to be a total of four um, single crochet togethers in a row before you're hitting the center point. Okay, so the stitch marker is right when the first one. So we're gonna go two together for one, then a single crochet. Two together again for two, and then a single crochet. Two together again, and then a single crochet. That's for three and two together again and then a single crochet is right on the center point. So move up that stitch marker on that center point that you had it in and then let's start again. So the next one on the other side will be two together for one and then a single crochet and then two together again for two and a single crochet two together again and a single crochet and that's for three and then two together again and that's your fourth one. So now we're going to continue to come along the back or the bottom of the thing and we're looking for the next stitch marker for when we do two together before we get to the final part of the heel. 
get the strands out of the way. So we're just gonna continue to single crochet across. Okay, so the next one is the stitch marker. So it's gonna be two together for this one. That's for one, then a single crochet. Two together again. Okay, that was for two and then a single crochet. And then two together again, just like that. And then that concludes that round and you have to then um, just join with the slip stitch to the beginning, just like that. Okay, so let's uh, begin and let's go up for row number five. Row number five, we're just chaining one, one single crochet into the first one and then we're just going to just put in one single crochet into each. When you get to the front of the foot, move that stitch marker up to match the center point and then uh, just join me back here in just a moment and then we'll start row number six. There's only six and seven left and then your entire slipper is done. So I'm coming up all the way back around and this is row number five. So it's just a single crochet and now I want to realign the stitch markers once again. So this time let's look at the chart. What do we have? So number six, round six like so. We are going to start off and just do two togethers. Okay, they'll only be done twice this time instead of three that you've seen before. And this time up here is we only have it showing three times and this starts on row, no, or sorry, nine stitches back. Okay, so let's go that. So let's just pull this out. So I'm gonna count nine stitches. I don't count the middle one already. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, like so. And let's pull the stitch marker out and begin number that one. And so when I look back on the chart, okay, so I got row number six, row number six, I'm going to be, what do we got? So we got one, two, three, four, five, and six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, so six back. So here's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Gonna move that stitch marker for the other side for the heel. Okay, so now I'm ready to go again and let's now do round number six and then we have round number seven and that's it. So let's uh, keep on going. Okay, let's start round six. We're gonna chain one, one single crochet in the first one. Now we're only gonna do two together twice this time around. So the next two are together and then a single crochet and then the next two are together and then the remainder up until the stitch marker here is going to be one single crochet into each. So we'd be getting smaller and smaller. So if you've been wondering the, the final uh, middle is going to be just a sewn right down the middle. Now in round number six we're only going to put um, two together in the toe area. Uh, three times on each side of the center line so it's not four. So let's do the first one. Here's the stitch marker. So the next two are together for one, then single crochet, two together. That's for two and then a single crochet and then two together. Just like that and here we go. So now we're going to, uh, we're at the center line so now we have to do it again. So two together again and then a single crochet and then two together again and single crochet and then two together again. So that'd be third time in a row. And then we're gonna work our way and the heel starts right here. So let's just single crochet ourselves across to that point. So one, actually I'm not, I don't need to count. I just gotta look for the stitch marker. And the back heel area only has two together done twice up into the stitch marker. So the stitch marker represents the first one. So two together and then single crochet, two together. And then the last stitch is one single crochet. Or is, sorry, is, uh, is the join. 
I always forget that the last center point is the single crochet. So that concludes off round number six and now we just have round number seven to go and let's just move the st stitch markers one more time. Okay, so let's move our stitch markers then from the center point. Okay, coming up. And you know if you've ever get confused you can always just look straight down too and you'll find it. So there's the center point right there. If I forgot to move it which I did. Okay, so we have to go to the fifth. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. Okay, that is our first one. Now on the back heel, let's turn this around and do the back heel. In the back heel it is only five. Sorry, one, two, three, four, five. It's six, sorry. So let's count back. So one, two, three, four, five, and six right there. Okay, so we're ready for the final revolution and then we're going to do the sewing right down the middle. Okay, so to do that chain up one first and so on the back heel area it only does um, two together. Um, what do we have a total of? Um, what do we have? Sorry, I apologize. It has to be twice. Okay, two together. One and then single crochet. Two together that's for two and then we single crochet to the next stitch marker which will be the front of the toe area. Okay. Now that stitch marker represents where it starts. So this time in the front end here it only appears twice. So two together for the next one and then a single crochet. Two together again. Single crochet is right in the center point. And now we're gonna do two together on the other side for two more times. So it was one then a single crochet. Two together again and that's number two. So we're going to continue to uh, go all the way to the, I'm gonna take that out to the stitch marker right here and that represents the heel area. Okay, and on the back heel it only, two together only shows up twice. So that's, this is the first one and then a single crochet. The next two are together and then that concludes off this one here. So you just gotta join it. So now that's it. So what you need to do with this strand of yarn, just cut it extra long so you can use it as a darning needle strand and I want you to turn it so that it's on the inside because right now you're looking at the outside of the of the slipper. So I want you to turn it inside out. and remove out any stitch markers that you do have and pull that strand up that you were working with and I want you to use your darning needle and do a nice uh, line on the back loop only and I'll show you that in just a moment. So let's begin to use that same strand, get your darning needle out and I want you to do uh, just like you joined using the one loop from one side and one to the other. All I want you to do at this particular point is I want you to do the same thing. So just grab only one loop and just whip stitch your way across the seam. You should have equal in amount of loops because you're just going opposite to each other and just keep on going down the middle. And what this will do is that um, because we're going on the one strand only that if your feet are ever up on a recliner that the nice, the bottom side still looks just as nice as, as the top side. Okay, so continue to do that and I'll see you back here in just a moment. Uh, fasten it off and let's do a quick show and tell and then you can uh, and start enjoying your slippers whenever you finish this tutorial. Okay, my bottom is now sewed completely so let's turn this thing inside out. I haven't done our inside right and see what it looks like along the bottom. Just like that. 
just gotta give it a bit of shaping and that concludes on making your slipper and you just have to slide your foot right down in the middle in here and if for example this is too loose for you what you can just do is use your darning needle and just sew a few more of these together and that that will make it tighter up onto your heel if you wish and again that creativity is completely up to you. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com please enjoy your new pair of slippers and if you get these done we'd love to see your creativity of course available on our Facebook pages. So until next time we'll see you and have a great day. Bye bye.